Cut. Big cut. And a quick look at our rules of combat based on three five-minute rounds and, of course, five five-minute rounds for championship bouts. And, of course, in the amateur division, that changed to three three-minute rounds and, of course, five three-minute rounds for championship bouts in the amateur division. It's based on the 10-point must system, judging criteria, and to get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the cage. Here is Parad, the messenger, Muhammad. Now making his way to cage side, Fard Muhammad. Muhammad hails from Las Vegas, Nevada and stands at five feet, four and a half inches tall. Currently fighting at the 135 pound weight class, his pro MMA record stands at six wins and nine losses. Now Fart is a fantastic stand-up fighter as well as he is on the ground, very diverse. He hits like a tank and when things get taken down to the ground, well he's got a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu so he's able to handle things there no problem. Muhammad trains out of Carlson Gracie and Vegas Tribe. There he believes he just trains in whatever style it takes to get the job done. Muhammad is a very relaxed fighter when in the cage, but at the same time, highly explosive in the stand-up. Muhammad definitely a formidable opponent for any fighter. His skills will surely be tested against the likes of Pat Mix. Muhammad finishing up his preparations ringside. Now when it comes to Muhammad and Mix, Muhammad definitely has a little bit more, um, I would say, an advantage in the stand-up arena. So we'll see if you'll be able to use that against the likes of Mix, who we all know is more of a wrestler, definitely a ground game, has a fantastic ground game. So Muhammad's going to have to watch out for that. But like I said before, he has the jiu-jitsu experience, he can take care of himself on the ground. Fard Muhammad heads into the cage. Here is Patchy, no love, man. Pat Mix now makes his way to cage side. Mix hails from Angola, New York and stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall. Fighting out of the 135 pound weight class, his current pro MMA record stands at an undefeated 7 wins and 0 losses. 
Nick's had a fantastic amateur career as well that stood at 11 wins and zero losses. He's continued this streak for quite some time now, climbing the ranks in King of the Cage. Nick's currently holds a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and trains out of WNY MMA and Jackson Wink Academy. We're in for a fantastic bout tonight as Pat Mix heads into the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino, Niagara Falls, New York, King of the Cage and General Tire present this special three-round bout in the flyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Todd Anderson. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet five inches tall. Official weight, 135.4 pounds. He represents Carlson Gracie and the Vegas Tribe. Ladies and gentlemen, from Las Vegas, Nevada, presenting Brad the Messenger, Muhammad. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at 5 feet 10 inches tall. Official weight, 135.4 pounds. He represents WNY MMA and the Jackson Wink Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, from Angola, New York, presenting the former King of the Cage, champion of the world, Patchy No Love Me. Once again, Todd Anderson is your official for this bout. Three rounds, flyweights. Gentlemen, go with the rules in the back. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. I will expect a good, clean fight. Wish to touch gloves, do so now. And here we go, round one between Pat Mix and Fard Muhammad. As we head off into round one in the 135 pound weight division. Mix in the red gloves, Muhammad in the blue gloves. Both fighters engaging immediately here on the feet. Mix going in for the takedown. And Mix will get a takedown here early in round one. Mix now working the pass guard here, Muhammad turning out of this, trying to defend. And of course, Pat Mix trying to posture up here as he works from the half guard. And of course, trapping those arms is Muhammad. And Muhammad will continue to try and push him back to the full guard here. Mix now moving into side control. Muhammad doing a great job of defending here, but Mix continues to push forward. And Muhammad is just uh, fighting from the back here. And Mix just got a very good balance on top of him. Continues his full mounted position, but uh, a good job done by Muhammad avoiding any damage by Mix thus far. But as soon as he busts free, uh, man, you're going to be looking for some elbows here coming very shortly. Muhammad now twisting out of this. A little scramble here. And Muhammad now ends up on top. Throws down a nasty elbow. And yeah, just like that, very surprising. Muhammad comes around and now he's trying to move in. And Pat Mix trying to sustain the situation and they are gonna be back on their feet. Muhammad delivers a nice knee in the transition of things. Both fighters engaging once again here on the feet. Plenty of action thus far in round one. Mix looking for that takedown opportunity. Muhammad trying to stuff it. And doesn't quite get it there. Well, it's looking rather dangerous for Mix. Mix caught up in a small guillotine here. Oh, man, things are starting to change. And Mix slips out. 
Muhammad, though, going to keep softening him up. Not going to give him a second to breathe. Mix back up. And Muhammad sinks back down. So back to the ground in a guillotine being held by Muhammad. And an excellent job at that. Pat Mix looking for an exit, and he gets it. Mix breaking through now. Working from the half guard. Probably going to posture up like we said. Deliver some nice elbows from there. And Muhammad did a good job earlier in this round. Avoiding any damage. And Mix is just trying to go to work. But uh, like I said, Muhammad doing a really good job of holding him down. And this gives Pat Mix no opportunities whatsoever. Mix now trying to get into a better position here. And Muhammad is holding from the bottom. Mix now trying to sink in the submission. Muhammad looks to remain calm. Trying to work the head and arm choke here. Pat Mix going to work, but Muhammad seems to be going out. Mix and working to take the back. Muhammad doesn't let it happen, turns around. Yeah, what a great scramble between these two, and Muhammad's back in the mix here. No pun intended. And they're back in the stand-up. And it looks like Muhammad lost his mouthpiece there for a second. I'm sure we'll get things started back momentarily. Pat Mix is just ready, man. He is ready to go to war. This sort of changes the dynamics here for a second. I mean, your adrenaline is just pumping. And then all of a sudden, your opponent spits out the mouthpiece, and you're here chilling and uh, just trying to stay warm here. And here we go, back at it. Both fighters standing up here. Mohammed with a nice little toss there, and will take it to the ground. I don't think I've ever remembered the last time I've seen Pat Mix get taken down like that. And that says a lot about Muhammad here tonight, working from the full guard, but Mix has not allowed him to deliver any shots from the top. And that's gonna be a very difficult task. I mean, getting Pat Mix to the ground is one thing, but man, having to get past that guard and the jujitsu skills this guy possesses, uh, it's very difficult. Muhammad now working to soften up Mix. He's trying to pop that elbow out, but Mix is holding him down. Muhammad with a nice short elbow. Mix really going to have to be careful of those sharp elbows. Yeah, exactly. You can see that uh, Mix is, you know, he's, he's comfortable, man. You know, he's on his back, but it's not like he, you know, doesn't do this every day on the, on the mats there, uh, practicing jujitsu and all that. But, man, Muhammad's starting to posture up and get some nice shots. Dropping down bombs. And Pat Mix trying to roll out. Final seconds and that's it. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this round. And what an action-packed beginning to this fight we have received already. Both fighters just exploding right off the bat as expected. Mix going in for those takedown attempts. That's what we could have predicted from him. You know he's going to want to work better from the ground. And he was able to get those rather successfully. However, Fard, whenever he came down to the stand-up, Mohammed was able to really rock uh, Mix a couple of times, really give him a run for his money in the stand-up. Mohammed is just the type of fighter that just packs a punch like dynamite, and uh, that was enough to rock Pet Mix into wanting to keep things down on the ground. Stick around, more mixed martial arts action continues here at King of the Cage. And welcome back to Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino as we head off into round two between Fard Muhammad and Pat Mix. So far, it's been a war, and I'd say it's kind of an even round there in round one. Slight edge may go to Muhammad for the takedowns, but man, round two, a new beginning here. And uh, man, just utilizing those elbows to keep some space. Pat Mix goes into the takedown, but Muhammad switched things up. Both fighters fighting for that dominant position. Good scramble between these two. And Mix ends up on top. Mix in a position once again to possibly mount up, deliver some nice elbows. But he is a slick jujitsu practitioner. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if he starts sliding around and you see an armbar come out of nowhere. Once again, Mix working what he does best, working from the ground, softening him up far, keeping busy so he doesn't get stood back up. Muhammad trying to roll out. Fard remaining calm. Now looks like he may end up. Both of them back on their feet, holding on to a guillotine, but Pat Mix going for the nice slam and gets it. Pat Mix back in control here, working from side control. Great position to deliver some elbows from the side. And Muhammad knows this, he's trying to get out. He's trying to roll out of this position, obviously. Spinning around on the cage, trying to utilize it to his advantage. That's a good job by uh, Muhammad. Mix just wailing on the Fard's head. Not the most power behind those punches, but it doesn't matter. He's doing that. He's doing just enough to keep Fard occupied, to keep him busy. You know, and these hits don't have to be full force hits. They're doing just what they need to do, keeping Fard occupied while also keeping Mix on the ground so that things don't get stood up by the referee. Yeah, and you know, if this does go the distance, he's scoring points as well and showing uh, control. Mix dropping those elbows onto Mohammed's head. Once again, staying busy. More taps from the top, scoring as many points as possible. Pat Mix undefeated in his mixed martial arts career. Looking to keep it that way here tonight. So far, everybody who has stood in his way, he's been able to take out. But tonight, man, Muhammad's really bringing it. He's really turning things up here, testing the skills of Pat Mix. Far doing whatever he can to defend from this and stay out of harm's way. Mix just staying persistent. Mix working the body, working the face, doing whatever he can to keep Fart occupied. Softening up the body. Muhammad continues to work from his back and Pat Mix is gonna utilize those elbows and, and continue to go at it on his body. And man, that's got to be uncomfortable on the ribs. Taking a little bit of gas out of you. And Pat Mix is just staying busy from the body to the head. Elbows. Keeping him guessing here tonight. Creating some space. Trying to deliver some more elbows. Mix with the shots to the ribs. Muhammad trying to set up some submission attempts here. Possible triangle armbar. But he's not just sitting there, trying to make things happen from the bottom. And Pat Mix stays busy on top. Fard really going to have to work to get out of this position. Try to get back up to the stand-up. Definitely where he's going to be succeeding a little bit more. And there it is. He's got just about 20 seconds left in the round to do something significant. Catches the leg of Mix mid-kick. We'll see if Fart can capitalize on this. Now just wailing on Mix for those last few seconds. Final seconds remain here. And Pat Mix will end up on top as the round ends. Both fighters still looking very fresh and ready to go. Let's take a look at the replay. Mix basically controlled this round, was able to dominate the direction of where it was going, got a couple of nice slams there, got the nice takedowns, and once things got down to the ground, he really just took it where he wanted it to go. Fard had a hard time um, trying to really get ahead this round. I feel as though at the end when he got that stand up, he was able to pick up some extra points. We'll see how things conclude here in round number three. 
And here we go, the third and final round. Pat Mix with a nice left kick to the dome and now shooting in for a takedown. And he will get it. And Pat Mix is off to a great start here. Looking to go to work early as possible here in round three. Far beginning to look just a little fatigued. Mix once again working the body. There's a lot at stake here tonight. Pat Mix, if he gets through the likes of Muhammad, he will get a chance at the title. So there's a lot of pressure in the corner of Pat Mix. Mix staying busy, keeping Fard occupied, doing whatever he can. And what I mean by that is, you know, Muhammad is coming in here and he's basically got nothing to lose. I mean, in the sense that, man, he's got everything to gain. And Pat Mix is gonna continue to stay busy here from the top. Pat Mix working the body, working the head. Multiple locations, wherever he can. Any spot that opens up, he's there to smack it. Pat Mix continues to work from the half guard as he continues to work Muhammad up against the cage. And uh, just landing some body shots, mixing it up, scoring points. Fard trying to get out of this position. And a lot easier said than done, but you know, Pat Mix is just staying busy on top. And uh, like you said, Muhammad being you know, a little bit tired. You can see the exhaustion, he slowed down just a bit. But Pat Mix, man, his cardio is flawless and he is just pushing forward, staying busy, grinding. And Muhammad's just like, man, get this guy off me. And that's easier said than done. Mix continuing to lay it down on Muhammad. Definitely scoring ports for control here, taking the fight where, it's, where it needs to go for him. Fard once again is gonna have to try to get back up to that stand-up where he can use that advantage. Mix continuing to soften up Muhammad. Pace has slowed down quite a bit here, but like I said, Pat Mix staying busy, scoring points. And, uh, you know, rightfully so here in the final round. Got to score as many points as possible. You do not want to leave it to the minds of the judges. Uh, you know, Muhammad had some nice takedowns uh, earlier in uh, round one. But uh, things sort of slowed down here, the pace of the fight. But here on the ground, uh, Pat Mix is just staying busy. Look at that. This does not give up, man. I would not want to be Muhammad right now taking all those shots. They're just uncomfortable, you know? May not be damaging, but they are scoring points and they're probably annoying Muhammad. <laughs> Mix showing a lot of blood, but continuing to push forward. Attempting to pass guard here now. Pat Mix trying to pull out that right leg, but still staying busy. Making sure that the referee doesn't stand anything up, softening him up, Muhammad. Pat Mix taking the back and rolling over. This could be the beginning of the end as he tries to set up this rear naked choke, and that is it. Pat Mix victorious via rear naked choke here tonight over Muhammad. And nothing but sportsmanship here. Let's take a look at the replay. Now Mix immediately, I think he understood what he needed to do. He knew he didn't want to stand and bang with the likes of Muhammad. You know, Muhammad's definitely got all that power in his punches. He did what he needed to do, took things down to the ground and dominated from there. Stayed busy, made sure that things were going to stay on the ground, was working to soften up Muhammad, gaining control, getting points for on-hit contact. Everything he could do until he found that right opportunity that opened up, slipped his hooks in, took the back, and got that rear naked choke. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, three minutes and 48 seconds of the third and final round. Your winner by tap out submission via rear naked choke. Still undefeated, Patchy No Love Mix. And a hard fought battle by Pat Mix. Victorious here tonight. 
King of the Cage. We'll have a couple words with our winner as we throw it to Dean Stone. I am with our victor in this fight. He remains undefeated, Patchy. No love mix. You look terrific tonight. Tough opponent, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he had a deceiving record, but he's super awkward and uh, comes from like weird angles. I know he's a brown belt, so I don't know. I, I should have been a little heavier on top, made some uh, adjustments, but uh, I go as I learn. You know, I'm still young, so I'll get it better next time. But I want to take him on the first round. The third round suffice, and uh, I wish I didn't get cut by that elbow, but we're playing the game, man. I'll get cut all over my face to get this job. I don't care. And it was an accidental cut, so we the continue on with the fight. Um, it was on purpose. It was on purpose. He got a nice elbow. That was a good cut. All right. Now, talk to us about the rear naked choke at the end. Um, that's my move. I should have got his back a little earlier, but I was kind of rushing it. Um, he's strong. He's, uh, he's really explosive. So normally guys don't buck and get me off. You know, I, I go with like heavier guys and I hold them down. So he was a little smaller, like five three, five four, and he got like. It was hard to keep a hold of that little ass body, so it was good, man. All right, now, of course, you got Jackson Wink and WNY that prepared you for this fight. Talk about the people behind uh, your camp that got you ready for this. Uh, Jackson Wink, all the people behind me, Western New York MMA, Coach Dub, Herbert, uh, Dennis, Alex, Don, he's uh, not up here, but he's out there somewhere. Um, that's my team, you know, as opposed to my family, too, my mom, my dad, um, my daughter, Nicole, Lindsay. Everyone, man, uh, it's all part of my team. You know, I want to give a special birthday shout out to Tranky, he's out there too. Um, you know, it's a team effort from all my sponsors to even King of the Cage, Sherry and them, you know. Tom, they're all building me, and um, November 10th, that's my next show. All right, there you have it. Patchy, No Love Mix is our winner. Uh, he's a tough, scrappy fighter, pretty, you know, well-rounded. And he uh, has a lot of experience. He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I think he's 2-0 in MMA. I mean, other than that, I, I, I've watched some fights of his. He, he seems like he's he seems like he's pretty, you know, competent on the feet, but he seems just like a really slow starter. And uh, I think he's going to try to kick a lot more than box, so. I've uh, just continued training, as I always do. Just increased my uh, conditioning, cardio, my strength training, and uh, formulated a game plan. My fight camp, we go pretty good. I mean, uh, Usually, it's usually about eight weeks long, and uh, in those eight weeks, we're grappling hard, we're hitting nets hard, we're sparring hard up until a point, like two weeks we cut it off, and then uh, some days we focus more on other things than, you know, some weeks we focus on more things and more specific things than the other, but um, we've been preparing for everything that he could possibly throw at us for this one. Uh, you're going to expect a, a tough fight, a good fight, exciting. Um, I'm also well, very well-rounded, I can fight standing up on the ground, I can take it down if I want, so... Um, it's gonna be a, it's just gonna be a lot of fireworks. Somebody's getting finished. Either I'm gonna put him away, he's gonna put me away. That this fight's not going three rounds. Um, not too much difference. You're gonna see uh, pretty much the same fighter going in there, um, looking for a finish. I'm aggressive. I bring it. I come, I come to fight, man. I'll come to you know dance around and you know, ooh, I'm scoring points. That's not me, man. That's not me. I come to get it. I love this. Uh, Vince, I hope you're ready for a war. Keith, train hard, buddy. I hope you did, cause I'm coming to bring it. Here is Vince, the common man, Ciatoli. Vince Ciatoli now making his way to the cage. Ciatoli hails from Appalachian, New York, and stands at 5 feet 10 inches tall. This lightweight fighter has a pro MMA record of two wins and two losses. His amateur record stood at a very strong seven wins and three losses. Ciatoli is a very confident stand-up fighter. He's very skilled, has a warrior spirit, is always up for any fight and any opponent that gets thrown in front of him. Ciatoli trains out of Crow's Nest MMA where he practices a freestyle fighting technique, a very aggressive, um, he tries to be as well-rounded as possible, tries to train his ground game as well, but he's much more comfortable on his feet. He is ready to stand and bang, as we just saw from that interview. He's not looking for this fight to go to decision. He's looking for it to end, whether it means he's getting knocked out or whether it means he's knocking out his opponent, Keith Ferran. Whatever happens, someone's going to get put away. Vince Ciatoli heads into the cage.
Here is Keith Ferrant. Keith Ferrant now making his way to cage side. Ferrant hails from Buffalo, New York and stands at five feet, eight inches tall. Fighting out of the 155 pound weight class, his current pro MMA record stands at two wins and zero losses. He also had a very strong amateur MMA record that stood at six wins and four losses. Ferrant currently holds a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and trains out of Buffalo United Martial Arts Academy. Ferrant, a very well-rounded, very experienced fighter. He's calm in the cage, very calm and collected, knows exactly what he needs to do, and takes his time with his opponent. Now, Ferrant is a very skilled jiu-jitsu specialist. He's great on the ground. That's most likely where he's going to want to take things. However, that's not going to stop him from standing up and banging with Ziatoli. Ziatoli's going to want to throw hands. He's going to throw hands back. Now we're never entirely sure where Ferrand is going to want to take the fight, you know. He's just, he's a very adaptable fighter. He's just going to wait and see how is is going to react, what Ciatoli is going to be doing. He probably already has a hunch that Ciatoli is going to want to keep things on the stand up. He's going to want to bang there. So he may mess around with that for a little while. Who knows? He could want to take it right to the ground. If he wants to there, then it could be very dangerous for Ciatoli as, as we said before, he has a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Keith Ferrand heads into the cage. King of the Cage on MAV TV will return after this. Tonight's presentation of King of the Cage is brought to you by Lucas Oil, made in America, sold to the world and by General Tire anywhere is possible ladies and gentlemen from the Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino Niagara Falls New York King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the lightweight division your referee in charge of the action Matt Rocca. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, official weight 155.2 pounds. He represents Crow's Nest MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Appalachian, New York, presenting Vince the Common Man, Ziatoli. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at five feet, eight inches tall. Official weight, 155.4 pounds. He represents the Buffalo Unit Martial Arts Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, from Buffalo, New York, presenting Keith Farrar. Once again, Matt Rocca is your official for this bout. Three rounds, lightweights. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules during the pre-fight briefing. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions at all times. If you want to touch gloves, do so now. Put way back to your corner. Round number one. Vince Ciatoli versus Keith Ferrant. Ciatoli in the blue gloves, Ferrant in the red, and they'll get things started. Ciatoli moving in with those hands. Ferrant keeping at a distance and landing those outside leg kicks. 
Ciatoli continues to plow forward. Ferrant now pushes him up against the fence. Yeah, both fighters just have no problem standing up, no feel-out process whatsoever, just get to work. Ferrant working the knees. Ferrant staying busy as he continues to work Siaya Atoli up against the cage. Some nasty short elbows being delivered. Ferrant goes for the takedown and gets it. Now maneuvering his way on top of Siatoli, trying to take the back. Ferrant continues to take that back. Looking for that takedown, possibly. Or a little bit of uh, just uh, some, some dirty boxing here. Gets a takedown. Now he's swarming him. And he's staying on him, making sure he stays up against that cage. Ciatoli looking to avoid the takedown. Ciatoli just uh, really working on defending this takedown. And Ferrant is just looking at, for that takedown once again. Land some nasty shots like he did earlier in this round. And they're free. Ciatoli looking to pick up some more points in the stand-up. Landing some nice shots. Ciatoli with the hands, and Ferrant takes it right back to the fence. Ferrant maintains control here. So far, I'd say he's up in this round, keeping the aggression level up, staying busy. Ooh, and Ferrant with a heavy right. And a kick to the body delivered by Ferrant, and a big right delivered by Ciatoli that misses. Ciatoli swinging with power. Outside leg kick dip delivered by C.I. Atoli. Shooting in for that takedown, Ferrant gets it. Now looking to go to work here from the ground. Ferrant stays busy, crosses over, possible full mount. Now taking the back of C.I. Atoli. Possible rear naked choke attempt, can he get it? Now looking to maintain this position here. Ferrant sets it up. It's not looking good for Ciatoli. He's working to twist out of this and he gets out. And they're back on their feet. Yeah, I totally looking to deliver a knee here. They break things up. Ferrant shoots in for the takedown, and now he's going to take the back once again. Ferrant looking for a takedown once again. Probably set up another submission attempt here, and he gets it. Now trying to go to the full mount, taking the back now. And now looking to capitalize on to see Atoli, taking the back once more. See Atoli trying to defend. Ferrant stays persistent. Ferrant not giving up that back. Keeping C.I. Atoli guessing here. Going for that outside leg trip, doesn't quite get it there. Takes it to the ground. Little over 10 seconds. Ferrant taking the back once again. Oh man. Sinking in, trying to sink in another rear naked choke. Ciatoli not letting it happen. And that's the end of the round. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from round one. Ferrant really dominating this round. You know, especially the second half. Ciatoli starting out very strong with this nice hands, explosive stand-up. 
uh, managing to land quite a few strikes onto Farad, but Farad, once he switched things up to the ground, was able to dominate much more and was able to take the back, what, nearly three or four times. We'll see if Siatoli can improve his ground game or see if he can keep things on the stand-up in his favor. Coming up, our matchup between Vince Siatoli and Keith Florence in the lightweight division. Vince Siatoli in the blue gloves. Keith Foran in the red gloves. So far, Foran has been controlling the pace of this fight. Every time he goes to the ground, there's been several rear naked choke attempts. Foran looking for that takedown once again and gets it. Now taking the back. Foran already working as exactly as he left off in round number one. Trying to work that rear naked choke once again, but they're back on their feet. Foran just relentless, continuing to keep the pressure. Ciotoli looking to stand and bang. Foran is ready. Ciotoli knows he's got a, uh, just a little window of opportunity to land as many shots as he can. As you know, Foran, it's just a matter of time. He takes it right back to the ground and tries to take the back. Here we go. Ferrant now just letting loose onto Ciatoli. Ferrant just stays on him. A knee to the body. And those are completely legal. That may have started the beginning of the end here, and it looks like Ferrant may come out victorious via TKO, and that is it. Man, what a war. What a victory for Foran. Let's go ahead and take a look at the replay here. Immediately goes for that takedown once again, was able to get it. And from then on, we figured it was going to be just like a repeat of the first round, you know, going to control the dominant, you know, onto the ground, eventually work for a submission or whatever he was going to do. But Ferrant, right here, throws that heavy knee to the body. And then one more to the head. In the shoulder area of Siatoli, and that was just enough to put him down. A couple more shots away, and the referee had seen enough. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Matt Rocca, has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, one minute and 20 seconds of round number two. Your winner by TKO, Keith Borah. I know originally I was supposed to fight the champion, but now I got a whole new opponent. Now it's Tony. He, I, I know he's a good wrestler, and well, I don't know. I just feel like he's just uh, really like, like he just really likes to wrestle. Only like one dimensional. I know my opponent Draco is a pretty solid boxer, a uh, decent boxer. Um, that's pretty much all I know. His his jujitsu is pretty pretty slick. It's decent too, so um, he's fairly well-rounded fighter. Oh, I feel for this plan for our, my opponent Tony. I feel like he's just gonna want to try to wrestle, and I've been working a lot on my wrestling ever since day one. So he's just gonna go back to the roots, just sprawling, bro. The difference uh, la last time, you know, things didn't go my way. I feel like I've um, since that fight, I've you know, I've learned a lot as a fighter. I've, I've learned to be more patient. Um, it's actually done more for me. Well, a lot for me, the loss has. Um, so, you know, it's helped me mature. It's helped me trust um, every aspect of my fighting. And I think tonight, I think it's just going to go a lot better. For this fight, I prepared uh, with wrestlers. I, I train with a lot of wrestlers over here in Iowa. And I feel that I'm going to have the upper hand around there. When I face my opponent tonight, I, um, everyone should expect a, a more well-rounded fighter, um, a smarter fighter. and. Um, a lot better outcome than last time. I have nothing bad to say about Tony, but after Tony, I want to fight the best in New York, and you know who you are. Draco, good luck tonight. Uh, let's put on a good fight for the fans. Is Tony Gravelly. Tony Gravely now making his way to cage side. Gravely hails from Martinsville, Virginia, and stands at five feet, five inches tall. 
fighting out of the 135-pound weight class. His current pro MMA record stands at a whopping 14 wins and 5 losses. Gravely is a very experienced fighter here at King of the Cage. He's been fighting for quite a long time. Has a fantastic ground game, which is usually how he ends up finishing off his opponents. Gravely currently holds a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and trains out of Tech MMA and Fitness Academy in Christiansburg, Virginia. Gravely's style is very much influenced by his wrestling background on top of the jiu-jitsu that, that he trains in. He doesn't do too much in a stand-up, but if he needs to, he can. He's definitely got some power behind his punches. Uh, most likely, though, we're going to see Gravely try to take things down to the ground. As we know, his opponent is much more of a boxer. Gravely not only looking to pick up another win tonight, but also looking to pick up that flyweight title. There's a lot on the line here tonight. Both fighters are going to be bringing everything to the table. Tony Gravely heads into the cage. Here is Draco, the great Draco Lini Rodriguez. Now making his way to cage side, Draco Rodriguez. Rodriguez hails from Sioux City, Iowa and stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall. Also fighting out of the 135 pound weight class, his current pro MMA record stands at an undefeated 4 wins and 0 defeats. His amateur MMA record had an even better standing at 13 wins and zero defeats. Rodriguez currently holds a white belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and trains out of One Combat Academy and Reds Boxing in Sioux City, Iowa. Rodriguez is known here in King of the Cage for quite some time now. He's become one of the fan favorites. Coming out of the wrestling state of Iowa, Rodriguez has a fantastic stand-up game, has a fantastic ground game. You know, everything about this guy, is a, he's just basically the complete fighter. Uh, Rodriguez, much more of a boxer though, however, we always love to see his knockouts and that's what the majority of his wins end up coming from, either TKO or knockout. We'll see what he can do as Draco Rodriguez heads into the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino, Niagara Falls, New York, King of the Cage and General Tire present our co-featured bout of the evening. Sanctioned by the Seneca Nation Athletic Commission, Chairman Scott Snyder, Commissioners Victor Redeye, Tina Abrams, Rick Jemison, and Justin Schaap. It's in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and founder, Terry Trebilcock Jr. Matchmaker Tom Vaughn, promoter Jeff Mahalik. The three judges scoring this match will be Chris Belinsky, Tim Corrado, and Forrest Hobbick. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Todd Anderson. And now, Western New York, put your hands together for our co-feature of the evening. Five rounds of MMA for the vacant King of the Cage Flyweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing first, a Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet five inches tall. Official weight, 135 pounds. This Tech MMA and Fitness Academy fighter has a professional record of 14 victories with five defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Martinsville, now fighting out of Christiansburg, Virginia, presenting Tony Gravely. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at five feet nine inches tall. Official weight, 134 pounds. This one combat academy and Reds boxing fighter 
has a professional record of four victories with no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sioux City, Iowa, presenting Draco, the great Draco Lini Rodriguez. Once again, Todd Anderson is your official of our championship co-feature five round schedule. And here we go. We are set between our matchup between Draco Rodriguez and Tony Gravely here in the 135 pound weight class for the Flyweight Championship. Both fighters possess a tremendous amount of cardio. The rustling ability, the striking ability, just well-rounded as Tony Gravely goes in for a takedown. Draco trying to stuff things. And a very tough guy to take down indeed. Draco's got rustling abilities uh, out of the state of Iowa. Gravely now working Draco against the cage. And, uh, you know, State of Iowa has some of the greatest wrestlers in the world of MMA, you know, just to name a few. You got Matt Hughes from back in the day. Uh, the list goes on. But so far, Draco uh, stuffing this takedown attempt. Gravely not giving up, though. Draco working in the knees wherever he can. Gravely staying persistent, trying to get this takedown. Gravely almost gets it, but Draco fighting for position here. Gives up his back there, and Gravely's trying to go to work. And Draco trying to pop right out. But uh, Gravely not giving up easy. Nice knee delivered by Gravely. Gravely now working the knees. More knees being delivered by Gravely. Draco needs to get out of this position. More knees. Draco trying to soften up the body. Gravely continuing with the knees. Draco covering up. It's a very bad position, got to get out of this. And another knee from Gravely. Continues this takedown attempt. Still stuffing this takedown is uh, Draco. Draco doing a good job of defending here. Gravely just utilizing that weight. Trying to tear down the energy of Draco. And a big slam for Gravely. He finally gets it. And the persistence pays off. Now pushing forward. Gravely trying to posture up. And Draco throwing shots from the bottom, but Gravely punishes him for his efforts. Gravely with the heavy shots. Yeah, he is really working that ground and pound right now. And Draco has just got to sustain the situation here. Because those shots are breaking through. Trying to take the space away is Draco. Got to be careful when you throw those shots from the bottom uh, when you have someone like Gravely on top. A little over one minute and 40 seconds remains here. And Gravely just continues to stay busy. Hammer fisting away. And these shots are starting to break through, like I was saying. Uh, man, this is just not the guy you want to throw shots uh, from the bottom at. Tony Gravely continuing to work from the ground. Draco really going to have to look for some kind of outlet to get back onto his feet. I'd say his best bet at winning this fight is going to be from the stand-up. 
Gravely doing a great job doing exactly what he needs to do though as well, keeping things on the ground. Working the punches whenever he can. Gravely moving into side control. And passes guard. Rodriguez not in a good position here. He takes a big elbow from Gravely. Gravely now just punching through Draco's defense. And a scramble by Gravely, but he's going to end up on top as he continues to work head control. Final seconds remain. And I'd have to say this round goes to Tony Gravely. Controlled the entire round. And that will conclude round number one. Let's take a look at the replay. Now both fighters started off to a great start, but Gravely immediately shooting in and trying to go for that takedown. It took him quite a while to actually get it down to the ground, but once it got there, he was able to keep things down on the ground and work from there. Uh, Gravely definitely, I would have to say, took this round just for controlling it and taking it in the direction that he wanted it to. I'd say if Draco is going to want to improve, he's going to want to try to get things onto the stand-up again and duke things out with Gravely as we head off into round two between Draco Rodriguez and Tony Gravely. Gravely in the blue gloves and Draco in the red. Both fighters fighting for the vacant flyweight championship. And there it is already right off the bat. Draco trying to stuff it. Draco defending well with a nice sprawl. Oh, and now Draco trying to sink in the guillotine possibly. Doesn't quite get it, trying to mix things up. Gravely moves around, passes. And now we'll work from the half guard. Great job done by Draco. But Gravely, man, has just been controlling it uh, the entire round one. It was controlled on the ground by Gravely. Very tough fight for Draco. Gravely continuing to try and pass guard here. Draco maintaining a good defense. But once again, Draco really going to have to try to pick things up here or turn things around in his favor, try to get back on his feet. I can't remember the last time I've seen Draco in this position where he's getting controlled. Um, usually he's the one that's controlling his opponents. And tonight, Gravely is just really bringing it up to Draco as he uh, moves him against the cage. Draco's trying to get this uh, high guard going, but it's not happening. Gravely continuing to try to work past Draco's guard. Gravely is a very persistent fighter. He's going to keep moving forward no matter what. It's very hard to stop him once he started going. And Gravely doing a great job of landing strikes in between every little pass. Gravely now in an ideal position. Draco now turning things around, getting a chance to get back on his feet here. Gravely continues to get worked up against the cage. But he's going to spin around. And Gravely ends up right back on top. Not a good position for Draco. And Draco knows this as he's got to get up because the entire round, it, uh, the entire last two rounds has been controlled by Tony here on the ground. And like I said, Draco is usually the dominant one when it comes to the ground game. But tonight, things have changed. Things are different. Now Gravely trying to take the back. Draco now moving to take the back of Gravely. Draco now letting loose. This isn't looking good for Gravely. 
Very dangerous situation. Things are reversing now. Draco trying to hold on to the submission attempt. Draco fighting the hands and trying to move in for that rear naked choke. Draco trying to work this rear naked choke, but Gravely doing a good job of defending it thus far. And Gravely managed to get Draco off his back. Gravely now laying down some heat. Draco looking a little overwhelmed here. Gravely continues to just throw bombs. Yeah, Tony Gravely is just staying busy. More shots from the back, trying to soften them up. Trying to sink those hooks in. Now setting it up. Draco is free, but now in a full mount position, Tony Gravely looking to unleash some shots. Oh man. Draco trying to roll out of this, trying to go out the back door. And now going to be back up on their feet. Great exit by Draco Rodriguez. But now he's trying to take Gravely back to the ground. Draco gets the trip. Nice outside leg kick by Draco. Final seconds remain here in round two, and that's it. So a good round by Tony Gravely. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the highlights of round two. Now Gravely definitely getting some points for control this round, taking it where he needed it to. Once again, getting those takedowns and move, working from there, doing a great job, doing exactly what he needs to do with his style. Draco still adapting to the ground game. Of course, he has a great grand, ground game, has that background in wrestling. However, Grave, it's in Gravely's element. That's exactly the type of fighter he is. If Draco wants to improve a little more, he's going to have to try to get to his feet. So far, Tony Gravely is up two rounds. Draco Rodriguez's corner is probably just wondering, man, we've never been in this type of position before because usually, like I said, Dra Draco is just so dominant over all his opponents. And tonight has been a tough fight for Draco. And Tony just continues to execute his game plan flawlessly as we head off into round three. Once again, since this bout is for the Flyweight World Championship, it will be set for five rounds at five minutes each. Draco defending this takedown attempt. Gravely persists forward. Draco holding on that guillotine, but Gravely pops right out. And we're right back to it. Gravely looking to deliver some nasty elbows once again. And here we are in the third round, man. Gravely has just been controlling every single round. There's no doubt in my mind that he is up three rounds at this point. Gravely staying busy. Gravely continues to work here from the full guard. Whether he passes or not, he's going to keep delivering shots. He's going to keep scoring those last minute points if this does go the distance. Gravely continuing to lay down the heat, pushing forward. Draco continues to hold on. And more shots. Gravely stays busy, making sure the ref isn't going to stand him up. Tonight's sponsors, Tapatio Meat Snacks. And of course, Lucas Oil, made in America, sold to the world. And a special thanks to General Tires. Anywhere is possible. Gravely almost passes guard here, trying to get into side control. 
Gravely passes guard and gets on top. Almost. Got to almost push back here. He's got half of a butterfly guard there. Draco trying not to let him pass. Gravely's pushing for it. Gets back into side control. Now in the half guard. Good job done by Draco thus far. Pushing uh, Gravely back. But Gravely, man, he is just uh, vicious with trying to pass that guard here tonight. I said this is a very, very tough fight for Draco. I can't remember the last time I've seen him in this position. Usually he dominates his fight so fast. Finishing fights in usually in the first or second round. But Gravely is really wearing on him. I'm trying to tear him down slowly. Gravely just continuing to stay persistent. Ooh, and a big knee from Gravely. Draco returns with that elbow. Gravely continues to put pressure onto Draco. Draco slipping out for a second there, but they're right back down to the ground. Elbows from the bottom, but leaves himself exposed and gravely gets a couple shots of his own from the top. Little over 30 seconds remains here. And Gravely is just on top, controlling and dominating this fight. You know, not a lot of damage being delivered, but the fact of the matter is he's scoring so much points just by those shots alone and controlling the pace of the fight and keeping the aggression level up. This has been a very frustrating fight for Draco. Draco looking to get back on his feet. Takes a heavy shot by Gravely, and man, this could be the beginning of the end. Draco is rocked, and the bell will keep Gravely from doing any more damage there. A rough finish here for Draco Rodriguez. Very strong for Gravely. Let's take a look at the replay. Once again, a very uh, familiar round as we've seen. Gravely right off the bat going for that takedown, getting it. Draco just working from the takedown defense as much as he can, basically all round. Gravely continuing to press forward, taking, taking control and taking this fight in the direction that he wants it to go. I gotta say, Gravely definitely taking the advantage this round as he has the last couple rounds. He's just dominating on the ground. And you know, majority of the fight, 80% of it is taking place on the ground. So if Gravely, if Gravely keeps doing what he's doing. Into round four between Draco Rodriguez and Tony Gravely. Tony Gravely on top. Three rounds thus far. Let's we'll see if things change for Draco. We are definitely in the long-term battle now. Yeah, you know, round four, it's just been a dominant fight for the first three rounds, and Draco knows he has to switch things up. Gravely most likely going to be looking for that takedown attempt whenever he can, and there it is. Gravely going back to work here on the ground. Draco going to have to work from this and try to stand up, but he's had a hard time trying to get that accomplished thus far. Doing a good job, though, defending from the ground from Gravely, but Gravely just, his persistence, he continues to press forward and break through Draco's defense. Gravely with a nice elbow. In busy trying to work Draco up against the cage. Oh, 
Draco pushing away. Gravely's going to continue to push forward. More elbows. Gravely just trying to pick at every nook and cranny here. Draco covering up. Gravely says enough. Tries to stand up, trying to pass the guard. Draco's going to roll around here. And Gravely finds his balance. Trying to straighten him out, putting him in the full mount and utilizing that elbow. More shots. Man, what a fight. Gravely doing exactly what he's been doing for the last three rounds. It's been working out for him. He's going to continue to run down that path, just keep pushing forward and persisting. Seems like as though fatigue is going to start hitting Draco very soon, if it hasn't already. Gravely still looking fresh. Gravely maneuvering into side control. Now locking down the arm of Draco. Draco trying to pop out of this, but Gravely's holding on. Draco with the elbows. We'll continue to work from uh, the half guard. Draco trying to push him back. Gravely continues to fight for position. Draco now looking to try to set up this triangle choke. Can he get it? This could turn things around for him. Gravely in a dangerous situation here. An opportunity though for Draco Rodriguez. Gravely pulling away, it looks like he's gonna slip out. Gravely escaping a uh, dangerous position there. Draco now with just under a minute left in this round. He's trying to make some kind of improvement or get back onto his feet. Gravely continues to persist. Tony Gravely trying to lift up, trying to deliver some damage once again. Draco holding on. Final seconds remain. Gravely looking to stay busy. Gravely continues to just maintain his position and do what he needs to do all the way through to the end of the round. Ooh, and throws an extra strike right there at the end of the bell. Let's take a look at the highlights of round four. Of course, Tony Gravely just staying busy once again. I'd have to say he is up four rounds, and this is a final round for Draco. Draco basically needs to go for broke after all this. Submission attempts didn't work in the end, and Gravely would end up taking his back. We'll see if Draco can make some last minute improvements. This is it, round number five. Someone's going home with that title after this fight. Thus far, Gravely has been dominating the control aspect, dominating where this fight has been going. Draco's been doing a great job at defending and landing quite a few strikes, but Gravely's right now is in the lead. Now we haven't seen too much stand-up game between these two here tonight. It's mostly been on the ground. Draco needs to utilize those hands. A little bit of a change here from Gravely wanting to stand and bang a bit. 
but now going back to the takedown attempt. Gravely just wants to go right back to the ground, taking no risk. There's no sense in standing up with Draco if you're controlling most of this fight on the ground. I mean, that's your bread and butter, and you got to go with it. Gravely working the pass guard. Tony Gravely just relentless on the ground. Body shots, elbows, creating space, short elbows. He's just staying busy. And that's what you got to do, especially in these championship matchups. Draco with some nice elbows there. Gravely just continues to keep pushing forward despite any hits getting thrown at him. More body shots. Draco continues to work from his back. And Gravely just looking for that opportunity to pass guard once again. Deliver some more elbows, some hammer fist, body shots like he's been mixing it up through this entire matchup. Draco continuing to defend. Landing some nice strikes on Gravely. But it's not quite enough to get Gravely off of him. Tony Gravely not stopping and just smothering Draco. Gravely really working hard, trying not to give Draco even a second. Now he'll end up in side control. We'll see what he can do from here. More elbows, and Draco spins around. Gravely drops back down, but Draco will get a chance to stand up. Oh, but he slips. Dodges the punch from Gravely. Pops the knee, but takes a hit from Gravely. Gravely pushes forward. Draco now up against the cage. Back on their feet. Gravely with a nice elbow. Now just non-stop. Combination, body shot after body shot. Shooting in for another takedown. Doesn't quite get it there. Gravely picks up Draco, slams him to the floor. Draco really looking like he's running out of energy here. Yeah, Gravely's really turning things up here. And Draco looks like he's in a bit of trouble here. I don't know if they're gonna stop. That is it. Gravely victorious, your new flyweight champion here at King of the Cage. Amazing performance here. Let's take a look at the replay. Gravely just an amazing display of not only endurance, but just persistence and determination. He has just been working from the very first round, getting those takedown attempts and just working to wear down Draco Rodriguez as much as he could until they got to the point where he could move in and finish him off. It worked out perfectly for him. He was able to stick to his plan for the majority of the fight. Definitely took a few big hits from Draco. Draco was definitely doing some damage and Draco is a very tough opponent to really dwindle down to that point. But uh, Draco taking his first loss here tonight but definitely put up a hell of a fight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Todd Anderson has seen enough, steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, three minutes and 49 seconds of the fifth and final round. Your winner by TKO and new King of the Cage, flyweight champion of the world, Tony Gravely. On paper, Gravely was the underdog. He was able to pull off the victory via TKO. Draco Rodriguez was in a world of trouble. As soon as Gravely took his back, he was able to mount up, land some solid shots.
Yeah, man, that would just end the fight just like that. We're gonna have a couple words with our new flyweight champion here at King of the Cage. I am with Tony Gravely, the new King of the Cage flyweight world champion. I've announced so many of your fights. You look terrific in all of them, but tonight was something special. Thank you. Um, I'm not necessarily proud of that performance. Uh, I feel like I did what I had to do to get it done. Um, and I just want to spell it means a lot to me. You know, not only did you beat a formidable opponent, he has never lost in both the amateur or the professional ranks till tonight. That's, that's pretty cool. But uh, um, he's a tough opponent. I feel like that loss is going to, if, he, if he's anything like me, that loss is going to make him my tough. He's going to help him grow as a fighter. Your striking was outstanding tonight. Talk about that. Um, you know, I, I'll strike and then it's, 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 when I get close, I take him down. And I, I wish I would have stood it back up. I feel like I could have finished him on the feet. Um, but, just, just, just focus on the main goal, and I just wasn't going to stop until I got it. And you did get it tonight. Congratulations. Now that you have the hardware around your waist, you are the representation of King of the Cage and our flyweight division. Anybody in particular you are seeking out to defend your belt with? Uh, no, I mean, I'll fight anybody. I'm not one to pick and choose and dodge. Um, everybody knows me, knows that I fight often. And I'll fight anybody, it doesn't matter. Spoken like a true champion, Tony Gravely wins our vacant King of the Cage flyweight belt. I'm going to send it back to Cage Side and Steve Inman. Thank you, Dean Stone. Until next time, we'll see you back here at King of the Cage. <laughs>